guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. I have had, I'm going to get right into it, I have had several requests as to where are my paranormal story times, where are my crazy stories. Well, this is per that request. Uh, welcome if you're new and welcome back if you've come back. Thank you so much for those of you who continue to return and I hope that some of you who see this video today will think about becoming a part of, of the sub hope because of course you're always welcome, everyone is. Now, because of those requests, I put this together and as per usual, all my videos are for purposes of entertainment. Even though a lot of what I'm saying is true, these are some of the things that I believe in that are not even for you to believe or not, they're part of our history and they're right the information is right in front of us we just I never pieced it together so without further ado let's get right into it I'm going to be calling these series of videos paranormal or not and it's up to you to decide whether you're just gonna brush it off and say hey this is all paranormal blah 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 and I'm not even gonna pay attention to it or if it's not and it is you know more important than it really seems now I've always had the question as a little girl questions I should say what why is the world the way it is why are people so evil why is there so much evil in the world with your pedophilia and the murders and the wars that are consistently going on around the world you know it's hard for me to believe that as human beings we were created to do so much evil and it dawned on me or not dawned on me but I in my research because a lot of this information Again, it's not just coming from me. I've done research in looking at history and a couple of people I follow online uh, through books and through library. I've been looking through everything. The process is ongoing. That's how these videos are going to come about. All this information that I have been um, looking up and researching, that's where it's coming from. Just so you know, it's not. I'm not pulling it out of the air and I'm not making things up. And again, I wanted to do these videos because I think that the message needs to be out there. So the first, like I said, I was asking myself these questions about just human beings in general. And I didn't realize that we were consciousness before we ever were born into these bodies. This body is a vessel. It's a holder. It's temporary. And we were consciousness before we entered these temporary vessels. So to consciousness, we will return, making us pretty much immortal. The only thing that's not immortal is this human holder that our consciousness is in. So you need to remember that we were consciousness first. And consciousness is, is a sort of vibration. We vibrate. We are atoms in vibration. So you have to remember that even before me diving into this, this information, you have to know that we survive or we live on a frequency of light. And... This is why I'm entitled, I'm titling these videos Paranormal or Not, because you have to kind of have the basic understanding of your body, what it is, what we are, what we really are, and understand who we really are before you can kind of understand and accept a lot of the things that have been, that are happening. Now, now that you know that what I think it is to be human, and for me, that's, that's the bottom line, that's the truth, we are consciousness first. Like I said, we came into the body, into these vessels, into these flesh holders, and we vibrate. We are not, we're like a, uh, how do I say, we're an image on a screen. And just to give an example of that, if for those of you who believe in the paranormal and in ghosts and, and believe that spirits that are unsettled or have still business to do here linger, for those of you that can see or hear them, the reason why they're clear and they tend to fade in and fade out is because they're on a different frequency level and they no longer have the holder that they were born in. If we were on their frequency, they would be, we would be solid to them. We, we would view each other as solid. Because they're dead, we no longer view them as solid. So again, that's something to remember, that's something to keep in mind because that'll factor in later on as I get more involved into the main point that I'm trying to make to you, the information that I'm trying to clarify. Another big question was, why are the few ruling the many? Who are these rulers around the world that get to say how I live, what taxes I have to pay, um, you know, what I, what laws I need to follow, which as you know, many of the rules and the laws and the things that we are governed by are absolutely ridiculous. 
and I know that a lot of you are aware of that. But to start with, who are these rulers? And I'm going to mention some of the top countries that have these influential rulers that have a say in what happens to the entire world. The first one is the Rothschilds. The Rothschilds is a very, very old family. They have been around a long, long time. And just the faces have changed. And their name has changed a couple times through the centuries. But Rothschild has been around, that name has been around for a really, 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 really long time, way before World War I. But they're the number one. Um, English, the English royalty and all the royalty around the world. You've got the U.S. presidents, got Russia, China, uh, Kim Jong in Korea, um, the Middle Eastern rulers, uh, Russia, I think I mentioned Putin, Australia, Akihito in Japan, and these are just some of the top ruling countries that are deciding, the, the few that are deciding for the many. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this because you have to have an understanding of the fact that this planet is huge and there are billions of people on it. Why are there only 13 families that are in power and in control? And obviously things are not, they're not as they seem at all. So in World War II, that whole world war, it was all war, all the wars, it's so hard for me to say, all the wars were manipulated. World War II was also manipulated into happening by these few people, these few people in charge that rule the many. And the main, one of the main, like I said, one of the top families in the world are the Rothschilds. And one of the things that happened during World War II, right before it broke out, they, a lot, they knew what was coming. They had inside information and the, the structure of how, just to give you a better understanding of the structure of the power, you've got the ruling families on the top that know what's really going on. And I have to add this in, they, we are being guided and there is an invisible hand that's pushing us to where we are. Let's just say that with our help, because obviously as human beings, we have free will. We know what's going on. And the people who really know what's going on as to why the world is the way it is and everything happens the way it happens, they're at the top of that pyramid and those are the ruling families that get to decide everything for everyone. Right underneath them, of course, are the governments, uh, the judges, the all, all the government officials, all the people that, you know, enforce all the rules. You've got them on that second layer. Some of them know what's really going on, but a lot of them are just there as tools to get their agenda to push it forward. Then right underneath them are the family members of this particular line of people. And ever wonder, ever stop to wonder why, I didn't know this, but the U.S. presidents, they're all related. Pretty much all of them are related to each other in one way or another by cousin, distant cousins, uh, aunts, uncles, you name it. They are all rela related. Did you know Obama was related to Bush? I didn't know that. So then they're that third tier and then all of us are underneath them. And again, you know, it, it kind of trickles in like a, like, tree roots trickles in and then of course we're at the very bottom all the people who go to work every day and follow these rules and have to pay these taxes and do all that stuff we're at the very bottom so world war ii the rothschilds knew that this was going to happen they knew the war that the war was going to break out they sold all their stock so did the middle class and so did the people right underneath them when as soon as that happened the rothschild the rothschilds bought all that up and that's where they accumulated most of the wealth they have now which is so much wealth that if they were to distribute all that wealth among every person on the planet you still wouldn't be able to spend it that's how much money they have so the few controlling the many that's one thing I can't dive into it because it's too much and I don't want to talk I don't want to be here talking your ear off forever I want to get to the point and get to the more juicier parts that you're probably wanting to hear like I said you just need to know these things uh, the few controlling the many. So whoever controls the air, the water, the food are in control of the world. Obviously in the United States, I don't know about Europe, but the United States, they put fluoride in our water. Do you know what fluoride does to the body? It destroys the thyroid. The thyroid regulates everything in the body. Fluoride destroys it. I personally had a thyroid cyst. I don't know if you can see my scar that they had to remove because it was malignant. I would have eventually become immune to antibiotics and died from a simple cold or infection. That's what fluoride did to me. 
I can't even tell you the havoc it's wreaking on other people. No, it is not good for your teeth. When it penetrates the body, the fluoride also crust, it, it encrusts your pineal gland. Your pineal gland is what allows you to have that, those extra senses that, my God, maybe I shouldn't step onto the road. This car is coming. You know, it, it just gives you an extra sensory perception. You, you kind of feel people's energy. And my pineal gland is not completely gone because I do have my sixth sense that drives me crazy, crazy sometimes, but it's nice to know that it's not completely encrusted over. But that's what fluoride does. Fluoride is bad for you. And lo and behold, in every dental school, they're teaching the exact opposite, that fluoride is wonderful for you. Mm. Okay, food. The pesticides they put on your food. All of that, Lord only knows what's in it. Also, people are trying to get organic food off of the shelves. They want man-made, grown food. From what I hear, they have manufactured this weird type of corn that promotes, you know, fertility, not promotes for fertility, but stops fertility. Like it makes people infertile. And that's what they do in order to control the masses, just like the free inoculations and all the free that comes from the government. You should be questioning about the free food and all that free stuff that comes from the government because it's not going to be anything good for you. And I'm sorry, but that, these are definitely my opinions. They're my beliefs. I think some of them have come to the forefront where you can actually prove what I'm saying. But um, yeah, so please take it with a grain of salt, please. Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceutical companies control the planet. And I don't know about you, but if you live in the United States, do you see the commercials? Do you see the commercials about all the freaking medications that could possibly kill you? It's, you're basically taking care of one symptom. You're not even taking care of the disease or the problem. You're taking care of a system and it causes you to not breathe well. And it causes you to have just enormous other, it causes your, the other body parts to completely either die or malfunction. That's all, that's all those freaking pharmaceutical companies agenda is to pretty much load you up with as much medication as they can to keep you sick and under control. Cause that's basically all it is. That's the end game. Keep you controlled, keep you sick, keep you coming back for more medication, keep you drinking that fluoride in the water. I mean, it's, it's really sad. Education. What can I say? I'm not against education. You need to educate yourself, especially if you want to be a doctor or something that is really technical and involved and you don't have anyone, you don't have a job in that field. Of course, education is important. It is good. But if you stop and look around and see what they're doing to education, you will see that it's not good. The average college student goes to school and you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, if you're lucky, you have a grant, but for those of you who can't get grants, you go to school and you come out and you're lucky if you make 30 to $40,000 a year, but yet you're in debt up out of your eyeballs. Do they educate you about credit cards? Not really. Do they educate you about the importance of keeping checks and balances and things like that? Nope. And if your family doesn't teach you, they're definitely not teaching you in schools. So that's another, another thing that they control come completely. And the banking. Banking system is a pyramid scam. Basically, I can go into depth in, into that. Guys, I know a lot. I know I've been in, I was in banking for 10 years. Uh, we need all these things. We have to, we live in this reality. We've got to survive. So there are ways around, you can maneuver your ways in and out of everything that's happening, but it's difficult when you do not know what the heck is going on. And that's basically what I'm trying to put out there. But the banking system, yeah, it's a pyramid scam. Uh, there isn't enough money to cover every loan and everything that's out there. Basically, what I can say about banking is it's just numbers that they're typing into a computer system. And the real wealth comes from all the interest you pay. And the real wealth and the real money is where you get yourself in a bind because you don't, you're not really educated on rates credit cards, stocks, bonds, nothing like that. You get yourself into a bind, you get yourself into too much debt, you can't pay anything back, and that's when they take all your property, which is actually valid and real. Everything else isn't. So I know it's a, I wish I could stop and really talk to you about banking. I, like I said, any requests that you have, any questions you have, I'll be glad to answer for you because I know a lot more about banking. Freedom of speech. 
do you see how our freedom of speech is slowly going away? It's slowly going away. I just, at work, I, I'm just going to say the word that I said. I don't mean it in a bad way. I am not making fun of anyone. Again, please take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. You know, I've got to voice this in order for you to understand. I've always said retard. Like, that's just been a part of my vocabulary. Duh, stop being retarded. You know, and it wasn't meant maliciously. I would never make fun of someone who has a mental incapacity or a physical challenge. That's not who I am. That's not me. But I've always used that word, and I was annihilated at work for using it. Oh, you shouldn't be using that word. What are you using that for? You're not, don't say that, don't say that. No, pretty much we're all, we all are allowed to say what we want. It's a, but that just goes to show everyone is like, oh, you know, you, United States, we're free. This is a free country. It's, it's, we're not free. We are not free at all. With everything they're doing to kind of curb your speech, all this politically correct nonsense, you know, everyone I think is smart enough to realize when something is said with malice and when it's not. Bottom line, it's your perception. And if you want to perceive, perceive something to be negative then go ahead but don't don't put that on me and try to control me by telling me that i no longer can say that word it's ridiculous so and of course the technology ai is coming and it's coming at us really hard 5g everyone's so excited about 5g did they tell you what 5g does to the body it's very very unhealthy for the body and causes a lot of issues and damage to the body you just don't hear about that stories on the news why because the government controls it and so unless you're looking for it you will not find all the people that have become gravely ill due to the onset of 5g and they you know did tests in certain areas of the country that you don't hear about and of course you're not going to hear about those people who got sick they want artificial intelligence to be catapulted into society and they want us to accept it and the way they start is with of course i love my iphone don't get me wrong but this is how you start and then you gravitate to the watch and then you gravitate to the chip there is now a chip that you can put into your hand to control this yes there is i didn't know about that also work environments are not implementing chips for their employees to you know better access the building or go get a snack all they have to do is swipe their hand yeah, I'm not with that. But yeah, they are catapulting artificial intelligence like you would not believe. Not a good thing. Now, if you accept and believe that we were consciousness first and we are atoms that are vibrating, we are a projection. That's what we are. I know that's really hard to swallow, but it is. And if you want to look that up, if you want to just go online and Google consciousness and you want to Google atoms and you want to Google energy, all of it is there for you to read and see for yourself. We are atoms vibrating. Everything vibrates. Even this, even this is vibrating. We are at a certain light frequency and the light frequency we are on is super teeny tiny. Also, you have to understand that we are not the only beings out there. We are not the only smart intelligence that's out there. There are other um, vibrations, frequencies, and like I said, we are a teeny, teeny, tiny, ugh, so minute, the frequency that we are on, the light frequency that we're on, and it's really hard for us to see anything outside of that. One, because for the most part, everyone tells you it's a fantasy, it's not true, aliens are not real, um, other beings and other realms are not real, uh, we're the only frequency, do you really believe that we're the only frequency that exists, that we're the only, um, intelligent life on this planet? Yeah, no, we're not. Uh, there are other beings similar to us, and that's where the Book of Enoch comes in. Uh, if you believe all of this, and if you accept yourself for who you are, as a Catholic, I know that the Book of Enoch was once a part of my Bible. Why did they remove it? I'm going to read that, and if anybody wants a video, I'll probably do a small video on the Book of Enoch, because I can't wait to read that. Right now, I'm doing so much research and reading so many other books, I am, you know, I can't read the book of Enoch as well because I really want to concentrate on what I'm doing. But yeah, the book of Enoch was a part of our Bible. And as soon as I am educated and up to speed on that, I'm going to do, probably do a video on it. But now I am on reality. Our reality. Now that you, I don't want to say now that you, now that you accept that you're conscious, that's obviously we're consciousness and we're vibrating at a certain frequency. Um, and you know, it's hard for me to ex continuously explain that, you know, 
the paranormal thing comes in because of the fact that, like I said, we're being guided by something other than just humanity, something other. There is a being, there are beings that have been here long before we ever got here that have a lot of say in what goes on in this world, in our economy, in our lives, period. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is that we need to come to the realization that a highly, highly advanced, technologically advanced being, race, whatever you want to call them, is kind of pulling the strings and their influence has taken advantage of everything, of the fact that we are very, very, just like a child is easily influenced, the human race has been being manipulated and influenced and I don't want to say provoked, that's not the right word, but it's like these beings dangled a lot of candy in front of us. Obviously we are all different. There are people that are born with empathy and kindness and compassion and caring. Those are not the people that they focused on getting their attention. They took those of us that have no empathy, no compassion, really like sociopaths. They took psychopaths under their wing and convinced them that, hey, it would be a good idea to give up our freedom and give up what we were before the whole Adam and Eve situation happened. And if you really think, as a Catholic, I do not believe in the Adam and Eve story. I do believe something to that effect happened. But what, who is that snake in the story of the Adam and Eve, our creation, all of that? I believe the snake is a reptilian being. And yes. So this is the information. This is, this is what I was trying to get to without overwhelming you. The reptilians are the real thing. Now, I've been through all of this because I, I felt like I had to touch on each topic so that you can kind of see the transition of how everything works, how it filters down from the top, from like the pyramid. The leaders to who, who know, who know, and fully accept that those beings have been around for eons and ages and they have guided all the wars, they have guided all the chaos, they have guided everything to the point that we are at now. And just like I said, this is my introductory video, so I can't really dive into any specific thing. There will be more videos. I can tell you when I first started diving. Okay, so my camera's overheating, so hopefully I'm picking up where I left off. Um, I did leave off where there is with the Adam and Eve story about how we were somehow convinced. And for me, the people that were there, it, it's much more involved. It wasn't just Adam and Eve and a snake that came in and said, Hey, drink, you know, eat this fruit. It was much more involved. And for me, in my opinion, they were people who had no emotions, no empathy, no compassion. It was just all about greed, power, money, and what they were going to get out of the deal. We were convinced to give up everything. That's how, um, the speaking of the different languages came in. That's how just everything changed. We were no longer to communicate um, te telepathically. All our gifts, all those six senses that we had, because I believe we were we were way different before that period of time. We were living in harmony and happiness and everything was pretty much a utopia. And when that whatever decision was made, whatever meeting with human beings whatever happened in the Adam and Eve portion of the Bible was what doomed us and is why the way we live the way to, that we live today. But that was, this is the end of my video. I basically wanted to go through all that because there's more to come. I'm going to dive into a lot and I just want to end this with what happened to me when I was, when I found this information and I was really diving deep. Oh, that's where I left off with. My sister was on vacation. She, not on vacation, she went to visit my mom for a while. And I was diving into all of this and looking up and I was just like, my God, what, 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 what? I didn't know if the presidents were related. It's just opened up uh, Pandora's box for me. Um, I remember having my phone on and my, my tablet and I was just like looking up information. My tablet completely shut down and 
my tablet's old. I get it. I get it. You can explain it away if you want to. It had never happened. I take care of all of my electronics very, very well. Needless to say, my tablet shut off, completely shut off, like someone was in control of it. And I couldn't get back in. It took me a while to get back in. Thank God I saved all my passwords. I had to get my password from when I first purchased the, the iPad, which was years ago. And I somehow was able to reboot and get back into my iPad. Um, the same thing happened with my phone. I kind of simmered down. I relaxed. Uh, I came back in and my phone, I don't use Siri. I've never used Siri. I've never had a desire to use Siri. Every iPhone I've ever had, never used Siri. I sat down with my food and I saw my phone and the iPhone was beeping saying, did you summon me? How can I help you? Have, did you summon me? Whatever pops up. That really frightened me because through that time when I was diving into the information and learning and, and just, you know, really, really seeing what I didn't see before and putting everything together, I felt like I was being watched and having the next day my phone, all of my music was just going haywire. I had to re-download everything. Just, just my phone was acting up. It turned off by itself, turned back on. It was like somebody was manipulating my iPad and my iPhone. And then I came to the realization, I don't care about any of that. You know, I fixed my, my iPhone kind of fi was fixed. It got fixed on its own. I fixed my iPad and everything was okay. And I did feel for a couple of weeks that I was being watched. And I don't know, I, I don't know how to explain it. It did dissipate and it went away. And now I really don't care. I'm diving into this information. I'm gonna share it with you. And yeah, so that was the little paranormal piece in this story. You can believe it or not. It's up to you whether you believe it's paranormal or not. So until my next video, guys, I hope I was thorough in explaining everything. And hopefully you will stay tuned for the next video, which or the next few videos that will be more involved. And yeah, like I said, any questions, leave them below and I will see you in my next video.